Okay. The last time I did that, I responded okay. with the funds <laughs> the bowling league where I worked, and they laid oh, me off. Go. All right. For those that do not know, this is um, the old Revell kit that I have converted from the standard Razorback D model to a B model. This is the second in a series of seven kits that I'm going to be doing on the history of the Thunderbolt, my favorite airplane. And so, uh, like I said, everything that you see here shows what I had to do to convert the model to make it a B model. Um, for those that don't know, the kit comes as a standard D model which actually has a longer fuselage. It's probably right to the front of the prop, the fuselage length, and it cuts back here at the station line here. So what I had to do, as I did with the, you guys remember I brought in the prototype of the Thunderbolt last year? The all metal one that I did that's actually oh, the Thunderbolt right. that had the car door canopy? Okay. That one, I did a different process in cutting the plastic I found a new way to do this by experimenting with plastic parts. And so the seam line came out a lot better on this kit than, uh, than the other one. Now I'm not going to go over how to do that seam line cutting because it just takes up too much time. But um, I might try to do a demonstration on that sometime in the future okay. of how to, how to modify yeah. kits. Yeah, that, and that, I'll come was with that, be, that, that would be a great thing. Yeah. Later I think we wrote it. We got okay. a few people who want to do that. Yeah. Um, I didn't use but maybe five or six parts of the cockpit. So the rest of the cockpit, when you get a chance to look inside, has been scratch built. And along with the details in the landing gear well, I added some stuff there. The only thing that didn't come from the kit itself are the wheels and tires. They're actually aftermarket resin wheels because the kit tires are horribly wrong. Um, typical of the old Ravel models of, of the 1960s and 70s, they go together really well. Even though this mm -hmm. kit's been repopped a hundred times, I used very, very, very little filling, and in fact, I used no green putty. This is another technique that you may want to talk about. I use glue as a filler, regular testers model yeah. glue cement. Oh yeah. I use that. What I do is basically is I, I I coat the entire line that I'm going to glue together, and then let the glue ooze out just a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I take a finger, wet it, brush it down, let it dry overnight, and then I come back and I can sand it clean, and there will be no seam. So it's testers two glue. Two glue. That's all I use for building models. I only use super glue for, for photo etch and resin, but 90% of my model building is testers two glue. <clears throat> Cement, I guess they call it. Hmm. Uh, mainly it's because what I've used all my life, you know, for over 50 years, and I like it. I don't find a problem with it. Um, it gets you high. It gets you high. Yeah, very good. So, uh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So you started building all your life 70, over 50 right? years? Over 50 years. <laughs> you baby. know what? Over what, what 60 want, years, baby. Of, no, 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 50 years. One of the things I want to bring in is I actually have a collection of models that survived through the test of time that I built from way, way back. And I have the very first model I ever built. Okay? And I built that model on 22 November 1963. Which is oh, when Kennedy, Kennedy was assassinated. Was assassinated. I, was I, seven year, I was seven <laughs> years old, and I was building that model on the kitchen table and didn't understand while everybody in the living room was crying. Yeah. Couldn't understand it. But that was my first model. It was the Aurora um, box scale F4F Wildcat. And I still have that kit. Wow. Mm, and one of, one of these days, one of these meetings, I'm going to bring three or four of my old kits so you guys can have a real laugh. <clears throat> Knowing Alan, he'll just say, well, shit, I don't see any improvement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, still gone. Yeah. Imagine the, um, the markings show are, are the, uh, the B models that were flown by the 56 fighter group when they were stationed in the States, just before they got sent overseas. In fact, most of the B model Thunderbolts went to the 56 fighter group. 
Um, the airplane was tested in mid-1942 to early 43. The B models were left in the States as trainers, and then the C model was the first Thunderbolt to go overseas. That is going to be my next Thunderbolt kit, a C model, which will have the regular length fuselage. So I won't have to do a, a big modification on it. Where are the belts from? The seat the belts. belts are uh, from uh, Edward, okay. aftermarket Edward. Um, some of the cockpit dials are from kit bashing from other kits and from other resin <coughs> things that were left over from other kits to, to supplement the ones in there. Um, that's pretty much it. The, uh, the rest of the interior, like I said, was scratch built. The markings are just a mixture of markings from uh, um, Eagle Strike. And uh, the number one is actually, the, the number one on the side of the fuselage is actually made up from several other number ones that had to be cut to make it shape that way. So, cool. and I, what I should have brought was the, the, the book that I have the color photograph of that very airplane. This was Hub Zemke's airplane, the group commander at the time. Yeah. Uh, and the colors represent each squadron, 61st, 62nd, 63rd, red, yellow, blue, respectively. Okay? Very nice. Any questions? Nice. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take your Thunderbolt fan. Big Thunderbolt fan. Okay. As far as I'm concerned, best airplane of World War II, bar none. Keep, keep your Mustang. So you don't like liquid-cooled engines, huh? Oh, I love liquid. I love the Spitfire. <laughs> I, love the, I love the Mustang. <laughs>